government says fiscal responsibility is critical as they tackle the subject of pension reform. Details to the story and more coming up in the National Report. Welcome back. I am Wendy Edmond with the National Report for today, Tuesday, July 24th, 2018. Leader of government business in the Senate, Senator Simon Steele says government must ensure fiscal responsibility and fairness on the subject of pension reform. During a meeting of the Upper House on Tuesday, Senator Steele touched on two subjects that are of concern to the unions. One is that after serving 26 and two-third years, a public servant is able to retire and receive full gratuity and full monthly pension, regardless of whether they reach the pensionable age of 60. And the second, the minimum pension replacement rate of 70% is too low. He is concerned that the first scenario can result in massive costs that the ordinary taxpayers of the country will have to bear. This is at a time when we actually need to be thinking about raising the retirement age from 60 to 65. If we do not do this based on all of the actuarial reports Mr. President, our current NIS system will become insolvent. We will not be able to make payouts to the beneficiaries as they would expect. The issues were addressed by union representatives during a press conference on Monday. Labour representative in the Senate, Andrew Lewis, says while they appreciate that government and all parties involved have reached the stage to share a total of $7.2 million to 56 workers in the first instance, they want to find a settlement to the issue in the spirit in which they started. We will agree on a plan influenced by the Ministry of Finance influenced by the Ministry of Finance going forward. And we are sticking to this. As I've said, we give our words. We give our word, our word is our bond. But as it relates to the retirement, once you retire from the public service, once you are appointed before December 31st, 2018, once you leave, you ought to be allowed to go with your pension because that was our discussion. Minister for Youth Development, Sports, Culture and the Art, Senator Nolan Cox, says the process must be done in a responsible manner and discussions must be held in the context of the country's financial ability. We remain committed to the workers of this nation. We have given them more word that we are going to work tirelessly to resolve this matter. We have started with our initial initiative and we believe with continued dialogue that we're going to get this done. The subject of pension was raised when the leader of government business brought before the House the Supplementary Appropriation Bill No. 1, 2018. The bill seeks to make provisions for the appropriation of an additional sum of $36,134,000 to service the state of Grenada for the period 1st July to 1st December 2018. Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Mitchell, continues to take issue with the problem of intra-regional travel. He was speaking to a group of business owners and representatives during the Grenada Chamber of Industry and Commerce Business Luncheon on Tuesday. The topic was the Caribbean single market and economy and the opportunities for companies. But Dr. Mitchell used the forum to highlight some of the faults of the CSME. You cannot have a functioning CSME when people are not able to go from one country to the next. When goods cannot move freely from one country to the next. So the issue of transport must be seen as a critical factor and that was an issue that was addressed in a very serious way at the heads meeting. Dr. Mitchell says the problem is so bad that it is seemingly easier to travel to Miami than another regional island. 
He admits, although Liat has many problems and has improved its services in recent times, there are a few basic business principles that can be adopted to address the matter. The Grenadian leader suggested a reduction in taxes on tickets between the islands as one way to curb the problem. By reducing the tickets and making it less costly, you encourage more people to travel, make more flights available, and increasing, decreasing numbers of people traveling will far sub su supersede the revenue loss in terms of revenue that you would have, have to undergo. Simple. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell. The GIC luncheon was held at Radisson Beach Resort on Tuesday. This is the National Report. More news after the break. Ah, pull your phone, tap the screen. Double times road match winners. 2016, 2017 and 2018. We're going to make some history in Grenada. Last year was mass. This year is just more mass. Talking about Spice Mass 2018. We want everybody to come, support and let's have a good time on the Spice Isle. It's all about enjoyment and fun. Pretty mass and colors and jab and everything. So we just want everybody to unite and it's all about tapping the screen. They can't wait for us to come. Remember, come and experience the greatest carnival of all. And also come and experience the beaches and the beautiful island, right? It's all about 2018 Spice Mask Carnival. Come enjoy. Last night I drink the rum and I'm falling numb, but I know this morning I'm waking up. up. Tap the screen. Pull your phone. Remember, it's going to be epic. <laughs> 2018 Mask. Welcome back with the National Report. The Royal Grenada Police Force is clamping down on the possession and use of offensive weapons as plans are unfolding for the staging of Spice Mass 2018. That's according to Acting Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin, who expressed a concern about the trend of violence which involves the use of offensive weapons to resolve conflicts. He was making reference to recent homicides of young Khalid Griffith and Bradley Francis. I am concerned about the blatant use of offensive weapons in the commission of acts of violence. I am concerned about the apparent confidence with which a few individuals believe that it is okay to carry offensive weapons in public. I am also concerned about the apparent inability among individuals, particularly our young males, who either by choice or a lack of capacity resort to violence as a preferred means of resolving disputes and in so doing expose innocent members of the public to unnecessary danger. The executive of the police force have been briefed on the course of action moving forward, especially in the face of the island's bustling carnival season. Commissioner Martin said immediate action is needed to maintain the low crime rate that the country boasts of having. He hinted to the increase in foot patrol and searches as solutions to clamping down on offensive weapons. To carry out searches on individuals suspected of carrying offensive weapons and illegal items. To step up on the presence and policing of public events. To increase mobile and foot patrols before, during and after major events with a view of ensuring public safety to work with event organizers and promoters to ensure the use of private security as a means of assisting with ensuring the safety of patrons. These actions will be strengthened by additional measures to be implemented with our soon to be ruled out Carnival Operation Plan. Recapping today's headline, government says fiscal responsibility is critical as they tackle the subject of pension reform. This has been the National Report for today, Tuesday, July 24th, 2018. On behalf of all of us in the newsroom, I am Wendy Edmond, thanking you for viewing.